But what I really want to get into, we go back to, to Joshua 19, or actually turn, if you would, to Leviticus 19, because we're going to head there next. Um, and again, this is just going to be kind of a brief study of this, but, but what, one of the things that came to my mind is, you know, God gave them this inheritance within a whole nother tribe. And the Bible is very clear about borders. There are borders established within the whole nation of Israel. And each, you know, we'll just call them state for each tribe, right? And God is outlining, hey, from, from the river to the sea to this city to this city and just, and just giving you the details and saying these are the borders. Now, I'm going to try not to get too political tonight, but we, we derive what we believe politically from the truth of the Bible and from the truth of God's words. And that's where it should come from. I mean, when we know what's right, that should reflect in what we believe about everything, right? The scripture is our foundation of truth. And when we see that God is putting, I mean, there's definitely an importance given here on specific nations existing in the world and those nations having borders and those nations being independent and sovereign from other nations. This is the way that God designed it. And the reason, one of the reasons I bring this up is because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of different philosophies out there and philosophies of men that we need to be aware of and watch out for. Because some of them sound good. Some of them line up with the truth for a while, but then they kind of depart from the truth. And anyone who knows me, you know, a little bit or, or I don't know, you, you may or may not know some of my political leanings. Doesn't really matter. I try not to just, you know... Um, I don't preach a whole lot about this stuff because politically, I don't think it's very important. I mean, politics is kind of dumb and I, I got into it for a long time and, uh, and I got out of it. Thank God, because, um, well, we'll get into that if we have time later, but, um, I just, seriously, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, I think, but, um, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm neither. I don't like either of them. They're both, they're both two wings of the same bird. They both are, are you know, wanting big government and everything else. And, and, and that's what they're all about. And my political leanings are lean more towards like a libertarian. Just let's get the scope of the government in line with God's scope of the government. Because the way that God... The, the laws that God gave for human government to perform the duties of human government is supposed to punish evildoers. And I think that's a very good duty and it's something that needs to be done. And, but what's happening definitely in the United States of America and what tends to happen through all human governments is that many of them, not all of them, many of them may start off kind of good, but then they get really bad and, and start overstepping bounds and accumulating more power. And where we're at today is there's kind of a reversal of, of what the government's even for because the punishment of evildoers, evildoers aren't really being punished the way they ought to be. They're becoming more and more lax and slack on the real criminals, on the murderers, on the rapists, on the pedophiles. They're not getting their just sentence that needs to be carried out by government, the what God said. And then you have people who aren't criminals in the eyes of the Lord, who may be sinners, but they're not criminals. They haven't committed any crime. You know, people that may choose to do drugs, okay, or whatever. They pull a plant out of the ground and they want to get high from that plant. And, you know, now our, our government is just full steam ahead on, on cracking down and getting these people. Now, look. I know there are bad effects from doing drugs. I'm not for doing drugs. So don't get the wrong idea. I'm not up here saying, oh, yeah, we should all just do drugs. What I'm saying is this shouldn't be a crime. Let's punish the actual crimes. Because if someone just sits and gets high, they're, they're hurting themselves. They're going to hurt their families, you know, their stability, their finances, things like that. But unless they actually commit a crime, they're going to transgress against somebody. They're going to, you know, steal from somebody or, 
you know, fight, like, like injure somebody or whatever, they haven't really committed a crime. They're a sinner. They need to get right with God. They shouldn't be doing drugs. But that's not something that the government should be enforcing. And you could take that. That's just one kind of a major issue. And now you can start to see maybe a little bit why I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. <laughs> because, you know, there's a lot of different, different sides that, that, that typically one party will, will stay. And, you know, it's just a joke anyways because these parties, they claim to stand on one thing. The Republicans, oh, yeah, we're against abortion. Okay, well, what happened when you had a Republican Senate, House, and President? And you had a supermajority. What happened to all these issues that you stand so solid on and you tell your voters that this is what we stand for and this is what we believe in? If you want to end this stuff, then you vote us in. You had, you had all the power that you could ask for. And what happened? I'll tell you what happened. More government happened. More laws, more legislation, more, more taxes. Yeah, under the Republican government, more taxes. Just more stuff. More military, more bombing, more empire building across the world. No, I'm not a Republican and I'm definitely not a Democrat either. They're all for the big government. Democrats want to do all the, all the social services and tax the people, tax the people who are making the money to give to people who, who, who aren't making money and set up all these different programs to become dependent on the government. But you see, that's not the way God designed it either. The government that God designed was for the punishment of evildoers. And guess who were th was there to have compassion and help the people who were truly in need? The church was there to help the people who were truly in need. The widows, the fatherless, the people who really needed help. But see, when you get the government involved, they decide who needs the help, but they don't do it in the right way. They don't administer it properly. See, they're not using the wisdom of Scripture to do it. The wisdom of Scripture is going to say, people need to get right with God first. They need to come to church if they're going to get that. They need to do something for themselves if they can, right? There's going to be, first of all, we, we, I went over this on Sunday, you know, if, if a man shall not work, neither should he eat. That's going to be enforced in the church. So, but, but think about what that does. You can say, oh man, that sounds harsh. But what's going to help a person more? Helping them fix their character with some tough love and, and, and learning how to, how to provide for themselves or just continuing to just feed them and feed them and feed them like an adult child just, just babying them for the rest of their lives. That is not going to do them any good. 